Hello everyone, welcome back for part two of our third Kidslet book for the week, National Parks of the USA. And this part we will be exploring the central part of the United States. Some people call the middle of America flyover country because so many planes sail over it. But get your boots on the ground and you'll be rewarded with unique sights and big open landscapes from the Great Lakes to the Great Plains. Mysterious rocky hoodoos rise out of the badlands and caves snake deep into the earth. Mountains soar out of the desert like dinosaur teeth and majestic rivers gouge out canyons. From north to south, the climate varies from frigid to sweltering, which means there's a fantastic array of animals. Bison herds still graze the plains. Flocks of sandhill cranes and other migratory birds fly overhead and lizards, scorpions, and javelinas dart about the deserts. Alrighty, so some things we're going to explore here are the Isle Royale, Coyoga Valley, the Gateway Arch, Mammoth Cave, Hot Springs, Big Bend, Wind Cave, and the Badlands. The Lakota people gave the Badlands a fearsome name because of their crumbly stone, vicious winds, and lack of water. Now, people come from all over to see bizarre striped pinnacles and some of the world's richest fossil beds, which protect the remains of ancient creatures. Paleontologists have dug around since the 1840s, but they are still discovering new specimens today. In 2010, a seven-year-old girl found a rare saber-toothed cat fossil with bite marks on it from a fight millions of years ago. What might you find? Despite the high winds and prairie fires, animals like bison, coyotes, hawks, prairie dogs, and pronghorn live here. The landscape continues to change as rain and winds scour off layers of rock. Rangers say you only have about 500,000 years to visit before these jagged hills and spires wash away. Alrighty, so the Badlands are located in South Dakota. They were founded in 1939 and they are 242,756 acres. And some animals and plants we've got here is a two-tailed swallowtail, one of the larger butterflies in the West. This insect makes a protective tent out of leaves while it feeds. The pronghorn antelope are the continent's fastest land mammals. They can sprint up to 60 miles per hour to escape predators like bobcats and coyotes. Rattlesnakes to find prey, Prairie rattlesnakes use their keen night vision, heat-detecting organs, and forked tongues, which can smell hollow fangs, inject venom before they eat their prey whole. The plains cottonwood. Not many trees survive on the prairie with so little water, lots of fire, and plant-eating animals. But the plains cottonwood survives by living near streams and growing super fast. The prairie dogs are social and dig burrows with lots of room to hide from attackers. They recognize members of their town with a secret sniff or kiss. Bison can weigh as much as a small car and are the largest land mammals in North America. The tufted evening primrose is a white flower that stays open all night, attracting nocturnal insects with long tongues, such as the giant hawk moth. The burrowing owl is only a little bigger than a robin. The small owl hangs out underground in prairie dog burrows and eat lots of insects and even scorpions. Mixed prairies. Badlands National Park has one of the largest swaths of mixed grass prairie left in the country. Some of the grasses grow higher than an adult's waist. It can look like just a sea of waving grass, but this is tasty and nutritious food for animals like pronghorn, bison, and prairie dogs. These native plants also keep the soil in place so it doesn't blow away and create dust storms. Between 26 and 34 million years ago, rhinoceroses, five foot tall pig-like creatures, and alligators roamed a swampy tropical forest. Now paleontologists find fossils of all sorts of extinct, extinct critters, including three-toed horses, camels, and the first dogs and cats. 
Even older fossil beds host fantastic finds from a time when the area was a vast inland sea about 67 to 75 million years ago. Imagine sea turtles the size of cars and reptiles like the Mossuar, a giant toothed sea lizard that grew to 60 feet long. The air is dry and the sun is hot in the Chichuan Desert, but this park is full of life. About 60 species of cacti and 400 bird species carve out a living here. Watch for cottontails and jackrabbits zigzagging through thorny plants. In the middle of the park, mountain lions and black bears roam a small kingdom of spiky peaks. See those furry pig-like animals with pointy snouts? Those are javelinas foraging for plants. What gives this desert so much life is the Rio Grande, which makes, marks the border with Mexico and sculpts canyons like Santa Elena, where you can crane your neck to see cliffs higher than New York's Empire State Building. When evening comes, take in the clear night sky and listen for the howls of coyotes. All right, so Big Bend is located in Texas. It was founded in 1944, and it is 108, pardon me, 801,116 acres. And some animal and plants we've got here is the prickly pear cactus. During wet years, the biggest prickly pear cacti grow delicious red fruits that are as sweet as apples. Mountain lions can eat as much as 30 pounds of food in one sitting. Visitors report about 150 sightings of these big cats in the park per year. Lucifer hummingbirds collect plants, flowers, and even old spider webs to make their nests, which are often perched high up in a cactus. Javelinas live in herds and survive with very little water by eating the juicy pads of prickly pear cacti. Blue bonnets in the spring, the desert explodes and colorful wildflowers and cactus blooms. These blue bonnets grow up to four feet tall and are so abundant they turn roadsides blue. The largest agave in the park, the century plant, grows between 20 and 50 years before blooming one precious time and then it dies. Roadrunners rarely fly, but they can run about 15 miles per hour. When food is scarce, females occasionally feed younger hatchlings to their older siblings. The black-tailed jackrabbit can hop 20 feet when panicked. They have up to six litters of as many as eight babies annually. The spadefoot toad. In order to hold moisture, the spadefoot toad hangs out underground in a coat of slime. When they hear rain, they quickly find a puddle, sing to find other toads, and mate. Tadpoles hatch and grow up into two weeks. Native Americans are ate the seeds and flower stalks of sotal. They also used parts of the plant to make baskets, roofs, and walking sticks. Don't forget your swimsuit. Groundwater heated deep in the earth bubbles out of the desert on the north bank of the Rio Grande at 105 degrees. That's as hot as bath water. The ruins of a former resort with an historic bathhouse built in 1909 still collects the water in a big steamy pool. Slip in for a soak in the ancient waters as they are believed to have therapeutic effects. About 15,000 years ago, the last ice age was wrapping up and forests still covered the area. As the climate warmed, trees sprouted on higher and cooler ground. Eventually, the whole area turned into a desert and the forest survived only in cool sky islands like the Chisos Mountains, which rise to 8,000 feet. Now, these shady hideouts are home to rare plant species found nowhere else on Earth. One grass, the Guadalupe fescue, is so rare, fewer than 200 tufts survive high up in the mountains. To get to this wild 45 mile Long Island, take a boat or seaplane across Lake Superior, one of the biggest freshwater lakes in the world. Get ready to hike because there are no roads or cars. Tromp through boreal forests to find blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, 
and thimble berries that you can pluck right from the bushes. Not many animals make the long swim, so you won't see skunks, raccoons, or bears. But you might spot a moose browsing in a lake or hear a red squirrel chattering in the trees. After dark, light up your campfire, but don't leave anything lying around. Mischievous foxes often steal campers' belongings and hide them in the woods. So Isle Royale is located in Michigan. It was founded in 1940 and the size is 571,802 acres. And some animals and plants we've got here is lichens. More than 600 species of lichen live here. They can appear as tiny hard webs on the ground, light green beards hanging from trees, or splotches of orange paint on rocks. Thimble berries, pucker up. Tons of these tart red berries grow on Isle Royale. Larger than raspberries, they fit on your top of your fingers like thimbles. Loons, with their powerful legs, take deep dives to catch fish. Their red eyes help them see well underwater. These soft green plants carpet the forests and rocks of Isle Royale. They even grow on moose poop. The gray wolf and the moose. Moose are first arrived on the island in the early 1900s, but no one knows how they got here. Did they swim or did someone bring them? Wolves arrived in the 1940s by walking across the frozen lake from Canada. Since then, the populations of the two animals have risen and fallen in a dance. Wolves hunt moose for food and thin the population of sick or injured animals. But when there aren't very many moose, wolves decline. Scientists have been studying the relationship between these species since 1958, the longest study on predators and prey in the world. The garter snake that lives on Isle Royale are usually black with creamy stripes, but some have rare designs like orange red spots and stripes. In the waters surrounding Isle Royale, fishermen have caught lake trout that weigh 45 pounds, as big as a medium sized dog. The freshwater mussels on Chicken Bone Lake is home to six million freshwater mussels. Some mussels in the park grow as big as dinner plates. As you walk along wooden boards over a bog, bumblebees and mosquitoes buzz around you. Mosses and sedges crowd the mucky soil, bend down to look inside a pitcher plant, which eat insects. Bugs get trapped inside and the plant's digestive juices turn them into insect soup. If you're lucky, you'll see a moose ambling through, eating up to 40 pounds of greenery each day. Catch that whiff? That raspberry vanilla fragrance comes from rose begonias. Lake Superior has fierce storms and rugged coastline, including sharp rocks that lie just below the surface. Over the years, many ships have met their doom on these shores. Preserved by the cold water, more than 40 shipwrecks still lie right where they sank. Scuba divers drop beneath the surface to swim through spooky old hallways cabins, and engine rooms. Passage Island Lighthouse. Without the powerful lamps and foghorns of historic lighthouses, more ships might have crashed on the shores of Lake Superior. Passage Island Lighthouse is the northernmost American light in the Great Lakes and was switched on in 1882. But even this sturdy stone house, built about 60 feet above the lake level, wasn't immune to winter's fury. One ferocious storm in 1905 caused waves so high they broke the kitchen windows and flooded the house. Alrighty, everyone, that brings me to the end of part two. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the book so far, and I will see you all tomorrow for part three.